what are we doing? We're setting their, their life on a course. And God has given us the right to speak. And so what you speak is going to set your, your family's life on a course. Amen. So you got to understand that the power of your words, listen, you have the, mm, maybe I'll just preach this today. Amen. Go to Hebrews chapter, go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse, uh, verse three. Amen. We're going to talk a little bit and I won't keep you long. I promise. Uh, uh, maybe just till one o'clock or so. How many hungry? Ain't nobody hungry here, right? We all had breakfast. We all had our chicken burgers, our turkey burgers and well, praise God. I'm glad everybody ate because we'll be here till one. It says, who being in the... No, no, no. I'm sorry. I, I, I said Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. This, this is my message that I was going to preach, but we're going with something else. The Holy Spirit just kind of led me in a different direction, and we're just going to go with it. It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the what? By, how did God frame the world? By the words, listen, by words, by, listen, the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Amen. Everybody say the things which are seen. Listen, the things which are seen were not made of things that do appear. In other words, we, you know, this chair didn't come out of another chair. It came out because, listen, the, the metal was formed. Why? Because God put it in the earth. Listen, the cloth was formed. Why? Because God put plants on the earth to make cotton. You understand? God framed the whole world from things which are not seen. And he did it by speaking it out. In other words, he put this whole planet on a course. Everybody say a course. Now, so, so, so listen, so if we're created in the image and in the likeness of God, how do we set the life around us on a course? See, a long time ago, I preached a message, and I, and I asked this question. How many people here don't really like the world that you're living in right now? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you don't like the world you're living in, if, if, I know you don't like that. I know you, you too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but somebody's got to do those nasty, ugly jobs, you know, and I'm sorry, but I'm, th I'm grateful. I am grateful. But you understand, how many here don't like the world that you're, yeah, what am I talking about? I'm talking about your immediate surroundings. I'm talking about, you know, your neighborhood. I'm talking about, how, how many here would say, man, I would change my neighborhood if I could? So you can. See, the Bible says that we are created in the image and in the likeness of, of God. So if God framed the earth and the world, listen, if God framed the world by the words of his mouth, then we, listen, then we can change the world around us by the way we speak. You want to know the truth? Let, let, let me put it to you like this. The, I'm, I'm going to say it. The reason the world around you isn't changing is because you stop changing. You want the world to change around you, but you don't want to change within yourself. Hey, Amen. It's true anyways. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I said, listen, when we change ourselves, people around us don't know how to act. They don't know. Listen, when, when we allow God to change us to make us who we are, listen, the people that are, that are, that are, that are our immediate, our immediate icos, you know, those that are the closest to us, listen, they begin to change. Why do they begin to change? Because they don't know how to handle the new you, so they got to figure out different ways to handle the new you. I used to pray, I, I used to be one of those, Lord, change this woman. Lord, she's crazy, Lord. Lord, you know everything. Let me say it a little bit further away from her because she, she's an arm reach. She, she could chuck one of them bottles at me and pop me real good. See, this is a little further. If she, if she reaches it, this far, it won't hurt. But I'll be saying, Lord, she crazy, Lord. Lord, she, Lord, she beats me, Lord. She gave me a black eye one night. Y'all think I'm playing. She really did. Now listen to what I was saying. What was I saying? Lord, change her, Lord, change her, Lord, change her. And the bottom line was, is that, listen, we don't have the power to change anybody except self. When I began to say, Lord, change me, he said, okay, I can do this. You're giving me permission to. He goes, because you're asking me to. So he started changing some things in me. And, and, and you know, she would, and, and she would say things like, you know, this is the way you always, are, always have been. And I said, but I didn't act like that now. So what's, what's your excuse now? She goes, well, I just figured you were. And she goes, but I won't do that no more. And listen, and she began to change. See, listen, the words of our mouth carry, mm, go to, go, 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 go to a, 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 what is it, Proverbs 18, 22. It says, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Go to Proverbs 18, 22. 
we're going to find out. I'm, I'm not. Uh, 20, 21. Thank you, sir. You got to understand, I'm, I'm just going from, from, from memory here. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen to what it's saying. Death and life are in the power of the what? So what's, it, what's in the power of the tongue? So what do you, listen, if you don't like the surround, if you don't like the, if you don't like the, what, the world around you, what do you need to start doing? Watch your mouth. Watch what you're saying. You know, I, I, I'm going to be very honest with you. I had a boss and I always said, man, I can't get along with this guy. Man, you know, I, I, I just can't get along. I, 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 I'm, you know, I, I, I don't like this guy. If, if a car struck him and he just fell over dead, I'll be okay with that. And you got to understand, I was, I was just young in the Lord. I, was, I wasn't a pastor yet. I hadn't gone to Bible school or anything like that. But you got to understand, listen, life and death are in the power of a tongue. And then one day the Lord said to me, he said, why don't you start speaking blessing over him instead of speaking death? And so I said, you know, Lord, I said, Lord, let him be blessed. Let him be so blessed. He, get, he, gets, he gets promoted right out of here, Lord. Let him just be blessed. Let him be so blessed, Father, that, that they just take him on out of this plant. See, he had come from a union plant, and we were a non-union plant. So, you know, union plants are very regimented, very strict, and you can't do anything that is not in the rules. And if they do something, there's big fines to pay. You understand? He came to a non-union plant. He said, you know, the most he got was, you know, don't do that again. And so he's like, I'll keep doing this, you know, and, and don't do that again. You know, so, so I knew it as an eye. He's like, dude, you can't do this. That's not the rules. I began mad at him, getting all up in his face and, you know, swapping spit with him that way. And, you know, but the bottom line was I was speaking death. I don't like this guy. I wish he would get fired. And, you know, I began to, listen, I began to speak, I began to speak blessing over his life, you know, and, 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 and just speaking. And, and then I just, you know, all of a sudden from within me, I just started doing more for him. And I just started doing more for him, you know, and, and, and trying to help him out. And, and even though, you know, he still was trying to get over on me and stuff. And, and he did because he was the boss. And, 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 you know, one day they just promoted him out. He got, a, he, got, he got a promotion, and, and he, went, he, he, he went to day shift. I was still on, 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 on swing shift. And then, and then, you know, because, you know, of course, of course, you know, I was still, you know, one foot in, one foot out. You know, how many, how, oh, y'all call them lukewarm Christians. I call them baby Christians. You say, why you call them lukewarm? Because y'all are still thinking the Lord is going to cast him out. He said, because he be, neither be, I'd rather you be cold or hot, but neither, you know, not in the middle, or, or I'll just spew you out here. So, so I was one of those people that you, you know, you figured God was going to spew me out. And God never spewed me out. He brought me in. I said, he brought me closer. And I really love what you were ministering this morning, you know. About, I, I really said, Lord, you know, if we didn't have these baby dedications, if, 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 I would have just said, go on ahead and preach, girl. Go ahead and preach. But you understand, listen, I, I, I would pray for him even though, you know, I, I, even though I wasn't doing right. And I knew I wasn't doing right because I wouldn't come home at night. I would stay out till the bars closed and then come home, you know, the next day. And then, you know, one day my wife, you know, she was like up to here with it. And, and you know, if you, if you know my wife, you know, I, I talk a lot of junk while I'm preaching about her. You know, I talk a lot of stuff that is just, it's just fun and game. You understand? But my wife has never been one to give me an ultimatum. And when she gave me the ultimatum, I said, oh, she is serious. Because, you know, she, listen, when we took our vows, a part of us to get married when we took our vows is the divorce was never going to be an option. Just wasn't going to be an option, and, and and this and this time, you know, she sat down and she sat me down real cool and real calm and collective. She wasn't yelling. You know, how many know that? You know, ladies, let me tell you something. Your husbands, they know how to deal with you when you're yelling and screaming and shouting. It's the cool, calm lady that that doesn't scream that scares the daylights out of us, makes us start quivering. Like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, forgive me, please. You know, she sat me down and she said, look. She says, I want to talk to you. And I said, is this serious? And she goes, yeah, it's very serious. And I'm like, ooh. And so I'm like, okay. I said, what's going on? She says, I, I need you to understand one thing. She says, either you, find, either you go to another shift, you find another job, or you find another wife. <laughs> I said, whoa. 
And man, I, I'll tell you what, you know, I, I walked out of like, she ain't not going to tell me what to do. I closed the door and I'm like, Lord, what am I going to do? Lord Jesus, she's serious, Lord. And, you know, you got to understand, I got to keep composure. You know, I walked out and I said, whatever, man, whatever. You know, I'll do what I want. You know, I, I'm my own man. I'm a man, you know. Close the door behind me like, Jesus, help me. Lord, I got to fix this. I know I've messed up, Lord. I don't know what. Isn't that the way we do it, guys? Oh, I'm telling on all the guys in here, huh? That's why I got no amen. There was not one amen. And the ones that, hey, listen, and the ones that it ain't true for, you're single, right? Oh, shoot, I shouldn't have said that. I just threw a stone. So you understand, listen, life and death are in the power of a tongue. Now, now, now you got to remember, I said all that to simply come back and say this. The same person that I was speaking death over, I began to speak life over. He got promotion. So he calls me up and he says, hey, Josh, he goes, how you doing? I said, I'm working hard, man, I'm working hard. He goes, hey, listen, I'm getting ready to open another position on day shift. He said, would you be interested in taking it? What did my wife tell me? Another shift, another job, or another wife? And three days later, the old guy that I hated, now what if I had just hated him and got him in trouble and got him fired? He's the same guy now that's calling me saying, are you willing to take this position on day shift? I said, are you kidding me, man? You know I've been waiting for it. He goes, I know. He goes, but I thought I'd call you and ask you anyways just to see your reaction. I said, you're a jerk, man. You're a jerk. He goes, yeah. He goes, but you like me now, don't you? <laughs> you understand? Listen, what am I saying? If you don't like the world around you, then you need to frame it. You need to reframe it. You understand? I said, you need to reframe it. Listen, and you might say, oh, no, 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 no. Hey, you know, and words don't got, no, no, words, words have the power to frame somebody's life. Words have the power to, listen, listen, the little tongue, as little as it is, listen, one of the smallest members of the body, yet it has the power to set, all, listen, it set the whole world on fire and on a course to hell. If you really think about it, wars start and wars end by the power of the tongue. How many remember how many people died in, in Vietnam? About how many people died in Vietnam? 65,000. It was between 58 and, 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 and 65,000 people. You know, I've heard it was right in there, between 58,000. Of our soldiers. And it was all over talks. Where, listen, the head honchos couldn't get it together. And what makes it right for anybody to decide to give somebody a death sentence? Said, listen, said, our children at odds with each other, shooting bullets and trying to blow each other up. The tongue. The tongue. But you know what? We can, we can change all that. We can change all that. I said, we can change all that. You know, the world around you will begin to change if you simply begin to speak kind words wherever you go. You know, you know, I, I, I look every Sunday I look forward to seeing you, and I don't even know why. I just, I got to see you, and when I don't see you, it, it, it bothers me. I'm like, you know, is something wrong with her? Is she okay? You know, and I go through all the, all the hundred questions. You're that special. You see what she said? Did you hear what she said? Now, now listen, all I, I, I told you the truth, but yet all I did was set your world on a course. I belong there. Y'all have, you know, I, I, I see my brother, I, I, I had to give him a hug. I, I'm sorry, Sister Billy, I know you were singing and getting your groove on and, and she was just doing her thing. And I, this is amazing grace. And I, I, I heard that song. She was grooving, man. I'm a, you was grooving, sis. I'm, I'm just saying, you know, this is amazing love. And I'm watching her and I'm thinking, and, and I turned over and I looked at Brother Matt. I said, I need a hug. 
I said, I need a hug. And so I just, I just walked on over. Listen, I just walked on over and gave my brother a hug. And when he hugged me, man, I just felt this warmth come all over me. And I said, I can do this. I said, I can do this. Now, see, see what did I just speak to him? I just, I, just spoke, I just spoke to him how he gave me life. And you ain't done. See, a kind word will turn away. See, here, here, here's the thing. We're all set on, oh, I'll change this. You know, you, you know what that tells me? It was a shame that some fool thought you had the right to have authority. Did you hear what I said? You know, if you're in a place of authority, you say, Man, I'll change this. I'll take care of this. It tells me that the person that put you in authority didn't know that you had no right to have that authority. Because the bottom, listen, the bottom line is that a whole lot of us want authority. Listen, I'm a, can I talk to all the men in here right now? <clears throat> Can I talk to all the men in here? All, all the married, especially the married men. Let me just say this. I, I know we ain't, ain't going to hang from the chandeliers, y'all. Y'all ain't going to jump up and shout me down. You're not going to clap me down either. But you need to hear it anyways. I'm the head of the house. She's the boss. Amen. Your problem is you don't know how to be the boss. And you're trying to be the boss. But you need to understand just because you're not the boss doesn't mean you're not the head of the house. So as the head of the house and not the boss, listen, what do I do? I Listen, because she makes better decisions for running the house. I, I Listen, I give my input and then we come upon an agreement. And listen, now it reflects on me because she just sharpened me up to make the best decision to do what's best for my family. Listen, and there is no insecurity because she, listen, because we did what she said. I don't organize my, I was gonna say it, I'm gonna say it. I don't organize my drawer with my chonies in it. She got some color coded, man. The grays, the reds, the blues, the blacks. <laughs> Somebody that's that organized, listen, you need, to get, you need to delegate to them something to do because if not, then their talent is going to... See, a part of being a household, a part of being head of house is knowing who can, who can run things best in your house. It's not... I can run this house by myself. And that's the problem with a lot of men. We've been trying to run the house by ourselves. No, 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 no. See, a true head of house knows and say, hey, you know what? This, this child does this good. This child does this good. Well, I'll make this child. I have this child do this. I have this child do that. And, and then we'll treat them all and give them all a treat the same. Amen. But listen, I constantly compliment her on how good a job she does. Just because I come over here and talk junk in front of y'all to make you laugh doesn't mean that I don't compliment. The reason I can, the, can I say it? The reason I can talk trash in, in front of y'all and her not get mad at me is because I've made her feel secure behind closed doors. Now can I speak to the ladies? That was a strong amen, my brother. A very brave one. Because it was the only one in here. <laughs> but listen, ladies. When you get delegated authority to do something and to make a decision in the house, make the best decision for the house, not for self. See, I'm going to be very honest with you, ladies. I'm all, and, and, and here's generally where I, where I get myself into. I'm all for equal rights. I, ladies, you are equal to us as men. You don't have to fight with me. If you start fighting with me, then the only thing you're really telling me is that you don't feel that you are. But to me, you're equal. 
I tell people, you know, do, do you believe in lady preachers? Absolutely. Some of the first, listen, I, I'm going to be very honest with you. The lady that got me saved or, or the person that got me saved was a lady. She got me saved, baptized, and filled with the Holy Ghost at age 11. How can you say you can't have lady preachers? Well, she started me out on a good course. Amen. But when you're in the house, make sure that what's been given to you, you're not using it, and I'm going to say it, to nag. We know men have the gift of gab. Come on, ladies. We know that men have the gift of gab, right? I know. I, I see you give juniors the look. Like, I'm leaving. You better be coming home now. I'm still talking to him, Billy. <laughs> She starts walking. Junior's like, I got to go, Pastor. I got to go. You're going to get me in trouble. I got to go. I got to go. Now listen. Men have the gift of gab. Women have the gift of nag. Men talk too much. And you know what's, you know what's broad about that? That men say, I don't talk to nobody. Men talk. Listen, men gossip work more than women do. Listen, listen, don't tell me. I, I'm just going to say it. You can tell me anything. I'm a tomb. I'm a tomb. But I'm an open tomb. <laughs> things come in. Things go out. Listen, no, seriously though. Don't use, don't use your gift, you know, and, 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 and understand, listen guys, understand that being head of house doesn't mean I have to be the boss of everything. It just means I have to put the best person there to make the best decision for that. See, I, I, I'm, I'm the pastor of the church. The book stops here. In other words, all responsibility ends with me. Something goes wrong, regardless of whether the person did right or wrong, listen, I'm the one that's going to have to answer for it. And I'll tell all my leaders, I got your back, dirty britches and all. When you mess it up so bad that you don't think it can be fixed, listen, we're going to fix it. We're going to face it. We're going to go head on, and we're going to fix this mess. We're not going to run from it. But my attitude is the same at home. There was one time my wife made a mess of something. You know, there was a situation going on. And she made a mess of it. Guess who she called? Head of house. And it wasn't wrapped in foil paper either. And she called me up. She said, I made a mess. And she was crying, and she's like, you know, I don't know what to do. I said, don't, I said, don't worry about it. Let me make some phone calls. Let me get this straight. Let me talk to these people. We're going to get this fixed. We're not going to run from it. We're going to run at it head on. So we did. See, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Because she made a mistake, I'm not going to beat her up and tell her, you can never do, make another decision in our life again. That's just wrong. That's just wrong. You know, I'm going to be very honest with you. I, I feel like right now I'm talking, I'm just going to say, I'm talking to people that have been in relationships that have been quarreling, uh, and I'm talking to people that are getting ready to start relationships, and you're unsure whether you want to start this relationship or not. There's some of you here saying, I needed to hear this because we're coming into this relationship, and the relationship that we're coming into, man, these, these are some things that I needed answered. Listen, it, 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 if, he's, if he's so domineering that it's his way or the highway, then tell him, point me, in the, point me towards the interstate. <laughs> and get out! Forget the highway. I want the interstate. I want out here quick. I want to be able to speed a little bit and get away from you.
By the same token, if she's trying to be head of household, which is your place, and I'm going to say this dirty word, and she refuses to submit to anything, then you know you're setting yourself up for a lot of bickering. And that right there tells you there's, issue, there's underlying issues. There's underlying issues of why she cannot submit. Ladies, let me say this. Submission is not a dirty word. Can we, can, can, can we touch on that a little bit? I, I, all of a sudden, we went towards marriage. Can we touch on that? Go to Ephesians chapter 4. I believe it's verse 24, 25. We're going to talk about wives submit to your husbands. And we're going to just let the guys go scot-free. Because they're good anyways, right? All us guys are good anyways, right? Wrong! <laughs> Only I'm perfect. I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I hope somebody out there in Facebook land know, needs this because, listen, again, I know, I know I'm not, and I had a, I had a message, you understand? You know, I, I was going to preach on, 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 uh, on, on being doers of the word again and, and not hearers only, but listen, I was going to hit it from 525. I'm sorry, 525. I'm being doers of the word and, 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 and you know, uh, because of the abundance of revelation given to me, lest I be exalted above measure, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, lest I be exalted above measure for the, for the abundance of revelation given to me. In other words, God's word gives us revelation. Amen? Listen. Go back to verse 22. Hallelujah. Wives, submit to your husbands or submit to your own husbands as unto the Lord. I told my wife all the time, you better start calling me Lord. <laughs> say it. Say it. One time, say it. Say, yes, Lord. <laughs> I'm still teaching her on submission. <laughs> Come on, help me out. Say it. Yes. Now listen. It says, wife, submit, to your own, un submit unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Verse 23. Here it goes. For, as, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Amen? Now, you got you, don't, don't, don't start freaking out because I said, wives, submit to your husbands. A whole lot of people say, oh, here goes one of them crazy preachers going to tell the wives and beat the wife. No, 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 no. Listen. For the husband is the head of the wife, which we are, even as Christ is is the head of the church. How is Christ the head of the church? Let me explain to you why wives that submit, it's easy for them to submit. The reason why is because they have a husband that followed this scripture. Even, what does it say? Even as Christ is the head of the church. You understand. So listen, the understanding there is, is that it's okay for you to submit because when I submit to Christ, there's blessing that follows that. When my wife, listen, listen, I'm just going to say it. I, the other day I got home and I got home and there's some, there's some meatloaf and, and there's a chunk about this big and about that big around and I'm going to say, this is about this big and, and mashed potatoes about that much and, about, and corn about this much and, and my plate, we had three lumps. And I said, what you want, mama? Que quieres? Right now, tell me. I'll go get it for you. I got some meatloaf on my plate. I ain't had meatloaf in a year. Oh, heck yeah. What you want? Ma oh, did I, did I say that long? I said, I will do it right now. What you want? She 
She was submitting. I was acting as Christ. If you want to get your husbands to act like Christ, then learn to submit. You know why? Because they know how... Ooh, I almost said something I shouldn't say from the pulpit. Because when you, when you only give them what you want, when they're acting right, then that's not submission, that's agreement. See, I have people all the time tell me, Pastor, you know, I, I, I've, been in some, I've been submitted to this ministry. I've been submitted to this ministry, but I can't submit to this. You know, no, no, you've been in agreement with the ministry because everything that the ministry has done up until that point, you've been okay with. But the moment that there was something that you didn't agree with, now you, listen, now you say, no, I, I can't submit to that. You were never in submission. You were in agreement. Everything that I was doing, I could agree. Everything that we were doing, I could agree with. You know, many marriages are that way, that as long as it's going my way, I could, I, oh, I'll do whatever he wants because everything's going my way. But what if things don't go your way? What if you don't get to go out on that special date that you've been looking forward to because something happened or the, or the bottom fell out of the finances, car broke down, something happened. And what if you don't get what you want and it's a, it's a letdown? Listen, are we able to still stay submitted and say, you know what, we're going to fight through this, we're going to get through this, we're going to be okay through this? Hallelujah. And it says, wives, submit to your husbands. Submit unto your own husbands. Even, even. Listen, now let me speak to the husbands for a little bit. Go to verse 24. Tell that boy to be quiet. I'm almost done. <laughs> Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives also, so let the wives also be to their own husbands in every, everybody, all the ladies say, everything. everything. Not in only what I like. Amen. Verse 25. I love verse 25. Verse 25 is for me. I said verse 25 is for me. Husbands, that's me. That's not you. That's not you. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Amen? Now listen, wives, don't go try to make him love you. I remember there was a time, because see, we went to Rama, and you know all the all the Rama pastors, and they, they were all they were all you know very you know they, they were very correct and all their their what's the word their their um, their um, um, etiquette was very very nice. I mean the, the the husbands they went and opened the door for their wives. They ran around the car and and opened the door and the wife waited and then she got out and and, and you know and they ran to the front of the door before they went into the shopping store and the husband opened the door and the wife walked in. And so guess what? Then all of a sudden, you know, my wife's like, "You don't open the door for me." I'm like, are you kidding? I just came down off the mountain, man. I'm like, you know, you, you want me to know all this stuff. I just, I, I'm, I'm a savage. I just got down from the mountain. I was still of the mindset, I told you I loved you when I married you, didn't I? And some of the ladies are laughing, saying like, yeah, I'm married to one of those guys. He just, he must have just came down from the mountain. And I wasn't the one opening the door and, you know, just, you know, or, or, or pushing her seat in when she went into a restaurant. Now, you know, hey, man, I'll try good, you know. And when I do, man, woo, it pays great rewards. I'll run around sometimes all the way, you know, and, and you know, running around the car now is hard for me. So I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll stand in there. She goes, and she looks at me and she goes, what are you doing? I'm, I'm, opening the, I'm opening the door for you. <laughs> You'd have thought I ran around the football field or something, you know? And I'm like, I'm seeing black, seeing stars. Jesus, I'm coming home! <laughs> 
But she'll look at me with these goo goo eyes like, if you pass out right now, I'll give you mouth to mouth. <laughs> so I'm like. <laughs> and then I'll go like this. What am I talking about? I'm talking about, listen, listen. Back to the scripture. Husband, love your wives even as what? Christ loved the church. Listen, you got to understand something, guys. Jesus Christ never forced his wife to do anything. Who's his wife? You. And he's never forced. You want to know the truth? When he gave his life for us, he wasn't forcing us to follow him. Yet the problem that we have in the homes, guys, is that we, we, come on now, we do a little something for the wife and we expect the whole world. And we want to force her to do it. It's not a choice. You have to because I'm the provider. I, I did this, I did that, I do this. I, oh, come on now, we run through the whole list. I even wash dishes for you. Come on now. Well, that's not the way Christ loved the church. Christ loved the church. He gave himself for it and he never said, and you have to follow me. He just said, follow me if you'd like because I love you. And let me tell you something, guys. There's nothing, you're gonna, there's nothing that's going to get you a more romantic night because I'm just going to... I know we got children in here, but I'm just going to say it. Listen, listen to what I'm going to say. And I'll try to keep it ready to PG-13. <laughs> listen to what I'm going to say. Guys feel by touch. It's, every touch leads to sex for a man, for a guy. The younger, the more. The older, the less. <laughs> Why? Because my wife will scratch my head and... <laughs> <laughs> Baby's out! <laughs> Listen... Women are emotional beings. I really like your hair. No, I really like your hair. It's, you know, it's got that nice silver look. I really like your hair. You're very different. You stand out. I could find you in the crowd. <laughs> I used to like your hair, but you changed it on me. I used to like it when it whoosh, just... You, you could style that. Only you can. Bridget can't. Tell her not to do it. <laughs> Tell her not to do it. <laughs> See, what am I doing? Words. It's still, it's still words. What am I saying? Women are emotional. How you build, listen, how you build a woman up in her emotions. Listen, and can I say this, guys? I, I know guys are fixers by nature. But let me give you a real good piece of advice. Because you fix things. I, I've watched you. You fix things all the time. You don't got to fix everything. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's good to leave things broke. You say, Why? Because they understand that they can talk to you about anything and not, not be made to feel like they're, they're insignificant because they couldn't fix it and you could. Sometimes they just want to know that you're listening to them. And as guys, we're so used to talking and fixing everything that many times we miss the fact that they just want us to hear them. And that's where we miss it. And then, when, and, and, and then when we can't fix it, because we're used to fixing it, we get all frustrated 
and we make a mess of things. We make a mess of things. Why? Because I'm used to fixing things. And when I can't fix it, I get frustrated. And the problem surely ain't me because I didn't have a problem to start with. She did. And she began to talk to me about it. And when I tried to fix it, she got mad because the solution I gave her, she didn't like it. And because she didn't like it, she, I, it's her fault. And you know what? Maybe. And all it was was words. Wow. Life and death. Go back to that scripture in Proverbs. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And I'm going to stop. I think it's 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. How many love the... Listen to what that's saying. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, the fruit that you have in your life today, what you are living today, the things that you see in your life today are the fruit of what you spoke out yesterday, of what you spoke out the day before, of what you spoke out last month, of what you spoke out last year. So you understand when it says, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So you, if you're loving your life, it's because the fruit that you spoke out yesterday, the month, a month ago, the year ago, 10 years ago, is, listen, it was something good. But if you don't like what you're living out today, then listen, it's time to change the way you talk. Not so much try to change who we are, but change the way we talk. And listen, and let our conversation be conformed to the word of God, not to my words and my logic. Amen. Listen, I know that God's anointing was here, and I know for some of you, this wasn't the typical service and this is not what you wanted and this is not what you like. But this is the way the anointing was flowing and I'll tell you why I know it was, it was the anointing. Because when I sit around and try to be funny like this, it never happens. It's not, it's not funny. People leave because it's like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. Listen. But the fact that God gave me something to give you, listen, that, that brought humor to your life and brought joy to your life Listen, and it also brought correction to your life because what this was today was correction. If you don't like the world you're living in, it's because of the words that you've been speaking. Amen. Can I say this to all you business owners? If you don't like the way your business is going, then change what you're saying about your business. Begin to say, I have a prosperous business. Stop saying business is slow right now. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. If you're having struggle, if you're having struggles taking classes in college, listen, begin to say, Thank you, Lord, that my mind is open and I can grasp all things. And I have high understanding. You know one of the things that I love about this church? Let me tell you what I love about it. Listen, we have no millionaires yet. None of, nobody has become millionaires yet. I'm, I'm believing God that people will become millionaires. But listen, I, we have none yet. But this is what I love about this church. That listen, we are, we are a blue-collar church. In other words, we're working class. Every, you know, listen. But what I like is that people are, people are coming and people are coming from menial, coming with menial jobs, and they're beginning to climb. Listen, climb the ladder. Y'all you know, thought I was gonna say the ladder, the ladder of, of what? The ladder of what? Success. No, I'm talking about the ladder of prosperity. The the ladder, the ladder. I'm, I'm spoken like Pastor Ant. The ladder borrows, borrows. But, but listen. And the reason people are beginning to climb the ladder of prosperity is because they're getting a hold of the message of grace and the message of God's love. So keep climbing. 
because sooner or later, millionaires are going to appear. But they're not coming from the outside, they're coming from within. But you gotta begin to see it. See, you've seen yourself coming from, from listen, I was a menial job worker. I, I, I was used to making minimum wage. You know what I say now? Are you kidding me? I'm worth more than minimum wage. I'm not working for minimum wage. Listen, but I started there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Begin to frame the words of your mouth. Begin to frame through the words of your mouth. Listen, and understand one thing. A happy home, not a happy wife. A happy home is a happy life. A happy home is a happy life. Husbands, make your wife happy. No. Husbands, love your, love your wives even as Christ loved the church. Wives, make your husbands happy. No. Submit as unto the Lord. And don't let anything come out that's not in an attitude of submission. Listen, let's stand.